Hey, welcome back everybody. We're gonna do a video on the new slicer. Well, what's going to be the new slicer. So as you can see, I'm running the latest 1.42.0 Alpha 3. I was gonna make this video earlier with the Alpha 1 or Alpha 2. They were still extremely buggy. This version, solid so far. I haven't had too many issues, if any. Uh, so I just wanna do a quick overview on things that changed. As you can see, the screen is way nicer. So this is right here, 1.4, 1.2. This is the latest build I had before they jumped to uh, 0.42. Uh, as you can see, you know, the blue sky background and the, the gray thing and few of these bump outs here and the lack of information here and, you know, the old, the old, the old way of doing things, you know, had this little bar here. Well, all that has changed. We've got these beautiful new little, little uh, toggle cookie thingies on the left and we got a whole new section on the top. Uh, we have a new directional error arrow to tell us, you know, this is the Y, this is the X, this is the Z. The bed has some marking informations on it, so we have some some scale reference besides the grid, but at least it tells us what the grid, grid does versus this old grid that didn't tell us anything. Now, of course, we still had the colors here, but they didn't have the fancy arrows telling us which direction is which. So what else can we do? What, what else is kind of new? So I'm just going to go over a few things. Uh, one of the nice things is when you click on the object, you get this nice cage to tell you volume scale. You do have a whole new object manipulation palette here, so you can actually uh, lock a scale factor, unlock a scale factor. You can be like, I want the Z just to be 120% hit enter, and then it stretches the Z 120%, which is kind of goofy. You might like that 100%. Let's see what happens if we lock it. Maybe that makes them all do the same thing. So 120 Nope, it just locks us out from changing these things. So, not as cool as I thought it was going to be. Oh, I guess it did change it all 120. It just takes time. Um, let's go back to 100 and hit enter and let it sit for a while. So, we're back to 100% scale. We have the new directional pad, which is a fancy pull thing. So, we can pull in the X. We can pull in the Y. And, of course, can we actually pull in the Z? Can we actually go above? Well, it still snaps into place. That's the one thing that... Uh, you can never, you can really do correctly. Um, I like this better in Simplify 3D, where you can just sync the object. Like, oh, I don't want this part. Um, there is the cut, which is over here. So if you wanted to cut the base off and just print, you know, the Joker here, you can, and you can perform the cut. And I kept both parts. Unfortunately, I just cut it. But now I have the base and that, and yeah. But now I have this bad boy. Let's see, does, can I undo? Still no undo. So unfortunately, that is not part of the program yet. So let me reload um, our Joker Batman. And this will take a second. It's a big file. Mr. Mr. Veteran makes sure there's plenty of detail. I mean, look, there's even stitching on the bat. So, you know, it's all good. Uh, we still have the... Place on face. Oh, sorry. Place on face. So if we really wanted to uh, lay this down on its back, uh, which is awkward, or back on the base, it's still there. And we have this new rotate tool, which is actually in every direction. So if we wanted to do some fun stuff and rotate it back this way, you can use these notches to do different increments. You can use these white notches to do harsher increments. So we can do all kinds of fun stuff that we couldn't do before. Um, other than that, we do have a new, beautiful new uh, scaler. You can grab a corner and scale it evenly. You can scale it using just the side that you want to scale. So you can make a really goofy Joker man here. So, you know, if you, just, you really, really wanted to do this, you can <laughs> actually is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, I don't know how to undo this, but uh, there we go. I guess I can reset everything to uh, the scale factors of correctness of 100 and 100. And not 1,007, 100 and 100. So now he's reset back. There's still no undo, which I'll, you know, we'll keep bugging him, guys. We'll get him. We'll get him to give an undo. 
Then we got things like delete and arrange and make a make a duplicate of, remove that duplicate. Our um, layer editing tab, so that way we can do some finer uh, layer heights in different areas. And one nice thing is the slice menu no longer leaves. So if we want to just take a look at the layers, this will take a second to slice. And once it's sliced, um, we, you know, we're never actually leaving the main tab to see our slice. And we can jump back and forth. And you can actually can turn on uh, slicing in the background, which is kind of nice. So that way, while you're manipulating and such, it's going to slice in the background. But here's the general slice. It's going to continue to do all the, the difficult stuff. And um, we can hop back and forth between the solid and the slice. It definitely takes a second. It's not super speed yet, but at least we don't have to re-slice stuff. We don't have to do anything goofy. And then of course they added the time estimates before you export. So this in normal mode will take 13 hours and some odd minutes. So kind of nice. I do like the new look of Slicer. I think it's much more uh, modern. Um, I do like the uh, the way they've kind of laid things out. You've got your general, you know, your regular layout tab up here, and then you've got your fancy smancy uh, manipulation tools on the left, and then your, your basic here. It still has the print settings and filament settings and printer settings, so you have to leave the platter to adjust those. Um, I still like it this way. I enjoy having the three different settings that way if I want to change it to my HTP, HTP, HTPLA um, settings, I can you know quickly change it for the filament or I even have a high temp PETG I've been testing, so which only changes those two settings, HTPETG for the printer or print and filament settings. So you know this is just a quick overview. I really kind of like the new things. I'm going to go into some more detail here on some of the more uh, amazing features that I've seen. So let's go ahead and end this video and then come back here and we're going to go over some individual settings so you can see how to do things. So thanks for checking out this little quick overview on the new slicer. And remember, this is not a finalized project. This is an alpha three. It just really steady or just it just really, you know, well. Uh, put together right now. It's stable. Uh, I do recommend trying it out for sure. Definitely keep your older version around because it is, uh, it won't crash randomly on you. This one, I haven't had any random crashes, but you know, eventually you never know, but they've done a pretty good job keeping these things pretty stable minus alpha one and a little bit of alpha two is a little weird. So, all right, well stay tuned for more on the new slicer Prusa edition.